this is the completed fermentation chamber slash cabinet. And we're going to give you a brief tour of this for those that are more interested in uh, more details of how it was built. Uh, I will go on and show you the step by steps of building it. But to start, you'll notice there's an upper chamber and a lower chamber. The lower area is for long term storage, uh, uh, similar to like cellaring uh, bottles of beer. The upper chamber then is for fermentation purposes. A few neat things on the outside is that over here you'll see that the front of this chamber has locks that allow us to completely remove the whole front of this cabinet. The purpose in doing that is for easy cleaning and also for the ability to move this unit in the first place uh, in the future. Uh, also because you'll see that there's an independent gorilla rack in the unit. Um, this is just uh, insulation on top of one of the shelves. So the whole front can be removed by using these latches and, and pulled off. There is insulation in between. It can be pulled away and the whole shelving unit can be pulled out. So the whole thing can be cleaned and it can be moved to another location easily. On the side of the unit, you'll notice we have a Johnson A49 controller. And what you really can't see is that in the back of this unit, in the back we actually have a whole refrigeration unit attached to the back. I'll show some clips of that in the building if you're more interested. On the front side, our shelving, at least the way we did it, was we designed it that we could put whole cases down below or very large bottles like champagne size. The middle tier is designed to hold primarily 12 ounce bottles and the upper tier is designed to easily hold 22 ounce bottles. And that's a great deal of storage with the two sides. We'll be moving all of our beer in there shortly. The upper chamber we have a very large refrigeration unit compared to most. Um, this handled an eight cubic foot refrigerator, or eight and a half previously. Um, we can actually get uh, the fermenter and several carboys in here. We do have insulation on the doors. Our hinges are made to go away and leave a great deal of space. And then we have the rubber seals for when the door closes. And the whole thing you'll notice has insulation one to two inches thick in various areas. We've got the temperature probe for our Johnson controller. We have circulation fan up at the top to help circulate the air, as well as a tube that with a fan on top that will blow cold air down below. In addition to that, we do have space in the back to re allow return air and naturally uh, dropping cold air. So there you have the very basics. It's working beautifully, holding temperatures for us. This is a small batch of beer that we made in there currently. And um, if you like, then you can watch the full video. Oh, hey everyone, game on. It's, uh, it's project time here. We're working on the fermenter. Right now, I'm putting together. Uh, I got some pre-drilled holes. I'm putting in uh, some little braces to hold the top. This is one of the sides. And uh, anyway, I'm going to be showing you here a little bit ago as I put these together. But these are the two sides. Um, we've got a little back section over here where the whole coolant area is going to go. And uh, I'll show you more in a minute. All right, so I'm working on the sides here, and you can see right here, actually, what you're looking at is the top, and that's a brace to hold a, a top and have a little bit of a, a buffer up above it so I can actually store some things up above a minor railing. This is actually the back side, and the back wall is going to rest against it right here. 
Um, there's going to be space when the wall hits this seven half inches and that's going to be room to hold the compressor and house all of the equipment on the back side of when we put the refrigeration unit in. And down here uh, is a small base then that I'm going to be putting a shelf that's going to come across this way between that's actually holding the compressors. That might be hard to visualize but it's going to make more sense as we go along. What I've done over here is um, I flipped this over on the other side and I'm actually in the process of um, putting in some screws every uh, uh, so periodically. I've, I've got it screwed on the inside but now I'm going to be putting in screws on the outside and I have it pre-measured so they're going to go in at six and three quarter inches and I'm not going to get too too tacky on the distance between each of these. I'm going to eyeball it to be just maybe 14 inches roughly. But that way I'm going to secure it on both sides. I probably tend to overdo things on securing things but you know <laughs> I like things well built so I'm going to be doing this for a while and then uh, we come back I'll, I'll show you as we kind of how these pieces are all going to stack together. The little shelf's going to go here where the compressor is going to sit and then up here is going to go a shelf up there as well. But the other piece of wood the back is going to slide right into the slot against this brace here. So phase one is done. Really pretty simple. You can see up on the top there uh, is, is a spot to put a, a top shelf to lay down. I've got the bracing set in for that. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, then in the back, I'll come back here and that little shelf area is where the uh, compressor and so forth will sit and then the uh, racks from the refrigeration will be attached to this right here. I gotta tell you, I'm having too much fun with this project. So, so far, basically, I have uh, disassembled the back of this. I've dislodged the whole um, compressor and everything out of the back, taken that whole layer of styrofoam behind the plastic, and I'm just sawing right through the plastic to get into the uh, actual cooling unit to dislodge that. Uh, ha, I love it. I'm having too much fun. So we'll kind of show you where we go from here soon. So yeah, this was a this has been a fun project. So I've got the um, the the core of the whole refrigerator is basically right there. All in one nice tack tack piece there. And it's just a matter of getting that uh, assembled into the back of uh, this unit and, uh, and then getting styrofoam around it, but seeing how I'm going to fit it all together. Okay, it's insulation time. And we've gone with the, uh, the R-Max Thermal Sheet 3. And uh, Chris and I have been using the um, table saw. Actually, uh, cuts pretty clean. Cuts very clean. And uh, we're getting ready to uh, put a, a nice glue onto the back of this and put it onto the back wall of the structure. So we'll get that up and we'll take a peek at that uh, as we're working on it. It's good late. We've made uh, some more progress. And uh, th throw the light this way if you want. So we've got a 
kind of have stuff storing in here now, but uh, but yeah, we're gonna have to put the the top on it on the other end and glue this the side down. But um, yeah, we are making progress with the uh, whole chamber. <laughs> We've got the um, uh, insides, the insulation, all glued in place. Here's the roof. Uh, with some spacing around so it'll kind of fit down and and uh, just slide on the inside so there's some overlapping and then we'll seal that as well and there's a hole in there which I gotta clean up but that's where the um, refrigeration unit the the tubing is gonna slide down in here uh, to fit in and you'll see that in a little bit here we are Working on the next phase. How's that working, Christian? Uh, we just turned it on, and this back portion is already frozen. Nice. It's it's cold, baby. So uh, uh, we're kind of working on this. Christian's standing inside the unit, and uh, I'm gonna be fermented. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we basically uh, on the back have bypassed uh, all the. Uh, all the extra wiring you see sitting on the ground down there and we have it hooked up. We've got to kind of wire things up in the back. We're just making sure everything's in piece, good pieces, nothing's broken, no leaks. It's looking good. So next step is we're going to kind of get this uh, this bad boy uh, fastened up uh, the way it needs to be and uh, once we got that all uh, all uh, nice and solid in the back. We'll get the shelf in there. Yeah, you feel this, Dad. Oh, yeah. No back. Oh, yeah. It's it's cranking away. That's that's a beautiful thing. Alright, so here's the uh, compressor. And basically all we did was you've got the lines coming from the compressor. They were splitting off into multiple directions. Um, to go inside the original refrigerator uh, for the regulation of temperature, lights, etc. So we basically just snipped those off, took the original wire here, it's got a nice plate that I can tack onto here later as I guide everything properly, but um, but yeah, now we've just bypassed all of that. And with the Johnson temp controller, the beautiful part of it is we'll be able to mount, and we'll show you that soon, the temp controller here, and this will simply plug into that, and then that will plug into the wall. Uh, it'll have a temperature probe that will go off at, in, at some place, probably right where this goes in, but we'll show you that in a bit, but yeah. And then just very carefully work with all the tubing so that we don't create any punctures or holes, and we've done a good job so far. Um, to put that all in place. It's really not that difficult in the end. Also too, the other thing we did work to maintain, by the way, is that underneath each of these is kind of a, a rubber piece that's designed uh, to carry the vibration. And so that was bolted down, but not over tightened. I might have to do something later to make sure the bolts don't come undone, but that'll allow for the vibration as well uh, to keep the the unit quiet and running smoothly. Can I give that to you? Alright, we got the fan running. It looks slow in the video, but it's actually going really fast. This is a stealth quiet fan. And I've rigged this up with an AC adapter one I had. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful when you're looking at these is some of the fans, depending on uh, what their input needs are, like this one is a 12 volt DC you can get a lot of battery chargers like from old phones and things but a lot of those have AC outputs so yeah either have to get a fan that looks for AC input uh, for your AC adapter old phone adapter or you've got to find a, a DC which which this one handles DC but otherwise it's just awesome little thing you can wire it up we're gonna do more permanent wiring but uh, this little stealth fan is designed for long-term use and uh, do a great job circulating the air. 
All right, we're outside with my grandson Cameron. He's playing in water while I'm doing electrical projects. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> but you can see down here, I have two different fans, a large one and then a small one, which I'll use in different manners. And I gotta heat shrink these, but these are waterproof heat shrink splices. Got that running up to a second splice from another cord I have running over the plug. Yep. I have way more wire than I'll ever need. And that's the way of it here at the Clements family. We overdo everything. I'm not sure how I'm not sure how the rest of you do this when trying to figure out how to set up screws for holes. But I just use the old uh, pencil back and forth trick holding it right on there or taping it on. Something I've done back in my old installer days for setting up professional equipment. So yeah, we got a template to put the screws in for the Johnson controller. Okay, I'm getting ready to move this into place. Uh, start setting things up. I'll kind of show you. Uh, there won't be stuff coming back through that hole, but everything's going to lead through the hole on the side which has been uh, uh, all uh, filed and sanded down, so it's just a very smooth transition there. Okay, here's the plug back here. This will actually be back here. So all the power is going to go into a surge protection that we mounted back here. Okay, I've just uh, filled up the larger gaps with uh, this insulating foam sealant and uh, I'll cut this off after it's cured on the on the corners but I've also filled some of the large gaps uh, just you know a little bit more gap and where the, the wiring came through and uh, if you haven't worked with this before there's definitely something you want to wear gloves uh, when you're working with it but um, Next step was we'll we'll let this this set, and it actually takes out eight hours to cure. But um, so these won't get cut off till sometime later. But now we move on to taping all the all the seams with silver tape. Okay, at this point, uh, all of the seams have been taped up uh, on the interior, uh, with the exception of the the bolt that's held this, and that'll get that'll get sealed and foamed from the top but um, we're basically ready at this point to um, bring in the uh, shelving unit hey everybody Whew, long day working on various things out on the boat fixing the boat <laughs> but here I am back with the fermentation chamber I thought I'd show you kind of the next phase of what we got going on I'll get out of the picture here but uh, as you can see <clears throat> I have the shelving unit inside now and uh, the uh, refrigeration unit has been tested as have the fans all right so Christian's over here working with me we're cutting out the uh, the cabinet doors here I'll show you what those look like in a minute, but here's the first one. We'll have two doors in the bottom area, and then we're going to have uh, one large door in the upper area for putting the carboys in and out. So we'll go back to work at this, and then we'll kind of show you how that's looking as we move along. Oh yeah, it's looking good right now. Have it on two doors in the bottom so that we can keep our refrigerated beers down here and uh, enjoy that. But we got the full opening that we can fully... Uh, take our carboys in and out. We got a nice big glass one and two smaller uh, plastic ones, but they can fit nicely in here and we got a big enough opening for them. But uh, this is the frame so far. It's nice heavy duty, good looking wood. All we need to do is stain and put some doors on this and we're good to go. All right, so here we are. Uh, look at this, we got the front stained and everything. Uh, so we uh, went down to the local Rocklers and uh, we got some trunk catches, as you can see. And uh, basically, we're this uh, this front is removable just in case you know we ever need to move it. Need to have uh, the rack. So we've got insulation in between for yep. it to attach to. 
And uh, we just put those suckers on. It's nice and sturdy. This sucker isn't going anywhere. And it's ready for us to start assembling these doors and get the sucker going. So now we're going to detach this and put the uh, styrofoam pieces on the inside here of these. Uh, get those measured out. Yep. So we'll show you that. All right, so we've uh, we've got this main piece here going, and we've got stuff uh, insulation going to the inside of the door. Yep. Right now we got uh, our main pieces uh, glued down, but as you can see, we just cut out these panels, the got center. them all lined up and set in place. So once these main ones are set, we can start gluing these side ones. Really simple. Just got these main corridor ones going, and then. Measure to each one. Yeah, and we'll come back then with our silver tape along the edges and uh, clean them all up as well. So, yep. anyway, awesome. Using the table saw, I've cut a series of two and a quarter inch width strips, and these are going to be used to make the frame for the doors uh, to the cabinet. Then on the table saw, we've removed the guard positions made the blade tight against the rail and now we're cutting out a strip on the side I don't know if you can see that in the light that helps in order to do an inset of a thinner panel to go between go onto the door frame to complete the door frame for the center part of the door uh, cabinet doors here's a little trick I learned uh, for making frames you you cut your pieces and then you drill a diagonal hole across the corner and you slide a dowel through it. In my case I've drilled a 9 16th inch drill bit, a hole, going diagonal and then put a quarter inch dowel through. Of course that's covered with glue and we had glue put between the two pieces. Pull it all together clamp it, let it dry, and afterwards you, you cut these pieces off and I'll show you what one looks like finished. So here's a finished one. Cut off and sanded off the edges where the dowels were. It makes a nice frame. As we showed in a previous recording, we created this inset with a table saw. We purchased these panels, which are often used for the bottom of drawers. It was uh, not too terribly expensive. They were about $8 uh, for a two, two foot by four foot piece. These were then used to set inside the door frames in the little recess that we created. And you end up with a final product like this. We've never made cabinetry before. I've never done anything like this. So, folks, if I can do this, I, you know, I think anyone can probably do that. Today we're going to take a look at the interior. This is the upper level, and, uh, and you can see our cabinets are down below. We're getting ready to put the doors on shortly. But meanwhile, we've taped up the edges over here of this top insulated area. It's a two-inch thick insulation, although we've left this exterior area exposed for airflow. Okay, the doors are going on. The first door is in place. Um, I won't get into a great amount of detail. It really wasn't difficult to install. Uh, you have to use what's called a Forstner bit, which creates a flat circular cut, at least for the type I used. I used rockler hinges. You'll notice how much clearance there is over here, and that's so that I can have uh, this insulation here uh, to, to seal the door in. Also to notice right here is going to be more of the silver insulation going on the inner portion. Uh, so when it closes, it, that door is also fully insulated. So that piece has to go on. The particular uh, type of hinges that we went with were designed because this can go way back out of our way so it's not a hindrance to us as we're putting carboys in and out uh, plus as, as I said the added clearance in addition to that we added magnets above and below 
and you'll hear a nice click as it locks into place. So we know that we're going to get a nice seal on the door and some nice insulation. And then we will be finding some handles to put on that as well. Because the entire face is detachable with our clips on the side, it makes cleaning on the inside very easy as it will also make um, attaching the, uh, the new styrofoam piece very simple to do, getting that glued on. So anyway, another part of, of our design being a little unique in that way. Okay, the last step that we've taken is uh, to set up a pipe going from the top area down to the lower area. And I've fastened a fan that's blowing air down below. I still have a cir circulation fan inside the unit to circulate. It's also blowing colder towards that um, from this unit. This was because even though we have uh, vent holes down below to allow air to drop and cold air drops, and it is keeping cool down there, it's not staying quite as cool as the upper chamber. Uh, something I'd probably prefer to do. Um, right now you can see uh, we've got this holding at uh, right about 59, which is what we're trying to do. It's at 60 to 59, 58 range. So our temps are holding very well in the upper chamber. Now the last thing I may, the last couple things I may add to this later is look at um, possibly creating a, a drip pan with a little uh, tube that I could drain down below into my storage area that's down below through the hole and just have a little, you know, a little cup or something for it to drain into. The other thing I may do in the future is add a switch for this fan so that I can turn it off and on. And that would be useful if we wanted to drop the temperature in the upper chamber for cold crashing things, which uh, this is fully capable of doing. But outside of that, the unit seems to be working very nicely. Um, it's, it's doing a fantastic job. And there you have it, the finished unit. We're uh, doing some final uh, layers for clear coat, but uh, you can see it's complete. We have uh, the doors are all insulated above and below. We actually have got a small batch of beer going and etc. It's working just fantastic as well as uh, storing beers down below. So it's been a success. The temps are great. So here it is finished and we hope that uh, you enjoyed the video and this might inspire you to come up with your own design. Thank you for watching.